Hi and welcome! In this video, we're going to do an introduction to quadratic functions. So before I give you the formulas for the general version of a quadratic function, I want to start with our most simple and basic quadratic function. So this is specifically the function f of x equals x squared. So I'm going to start here, we're going to graph this using some points to find some vocabulary, and then we'll expand this to a more general version of quadratic functions. So if I'm starting with x squared as my function, let's look at some inputs x and find the corresponding outputs that are the f of x or the x squared values. So I'm going to do 0, 1, 2, 3, negative 1, negative 2, and negative 3 as my inputs, and then we'll find the corresponding outputs and graph the points on these set of axes here. So this is just helping us get an understanding of what kind of shape of the graph we have when we're looking at a quadratic function. So what's noteworthy here is that we have x squared. So this is what we're doing that's special is that we have this squared on the x. So when I put my first input in that is 0, what I'm going to do is square it. So I have 0 squared, which is the same as multiplying 0 by itself once. So I have 0 times 0, which is just 0. So my first point is the point 0, 0, which is at the origin. All right, next I have the input 1. The function squares this value, so I have 1 squared, which is the same as doing 1 times 1, which is just 1. So my next point is 1, 1. All right, now we have 2 as my input, so the output is 2 squared, which is the same as doing 2 times 2, which is 4. So my next point is 2, 4. All right, and then we'll just do one more positive value. Let's do x equals 3. So the output is 3 squared, which is the same as doing 3 times 3, which is then 9. So my point here is 3, 9. Okay, so this is what happens for some positive inputs. Let's look at the negative inputs now. So when we have negative 1 as our x, we're going to take negative 1 and square it, which is equivalent to doing negative 1 times negative 1. Now when we take a negative number and multiply it by another negative number, we get a positive number. So this is just equal to positive 1. So here we have the point negative 1, 1. Let's repeat this for negative 2. So we do negative 2 and square it, which is the same as doing negative 2 times negative 2. Again, a negative times a negative is a positive, and so we have positive 4. This is then the point negative 2, 4. So hopefully you're noticing some symmetry here. As we take the negative x values and give them as inputs, they're becoming positive, and so they're similar to what happens with the positive inputs. So as we do negative 3, we're expecting this to be the same as when we had the input of positive 3. So we do negative 3 squared. This is negative 3 times negative 3, which is positive 9. So this is the point negative 3, 9. So this is enough for us to graph the general shape of this function. So it looks like this. And this particular shape here is something we call a parabola. So a quadratic function, when it's graphed, it looks like a parabola. That's the word we use to describe it. And we also have one additional word we use. It's specifically for this point at, at least on this parabola, it's at the bottom. So this point zero, zero, this is called the vertex. So this is sort of the middle point where the symmetry changes. So it's sort of like halfway in the function. There are a lot of different ways we could describe it. I think the vertex is one of those things where you kind of know it when you see it. So it's this point here. For us, it's zero, zero in this particular graph. But the important thing is that we call it the vertex. Okay, so this is what all of our quadratic functions are basically going to look like. They're going to have a vertex, and they're going to be this shape, which we're calling a parabola. Then, before we move to the more general version of a quadratic function, I just want to comment on the domain and range here. So here, our domain is all real numbers. It's negative infinity to positive infinity. So everything works here. We can give the function x squared any input we want, and it's going to provide a corresponding output. Then when we look at the range, we see that the output values start at zero. So this means our range starts at zero and we'll include it with a closed bracket, the square bracket, and then it continues to infinity. So zero to infinity is our range since all of our output values are positive and in this interval. So from this, let's move on to a more general version of what a quadratic function looks like and we'll look at some more examples. So in general, we say a quadratic function can be written in the form 
f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So this is what we call standard form of a quadratic function. So similar to when we did linear functions, how we could say that every linear function could be written as mx plus b. Here, a quadratic function can always be written as ax squared plus bx plus c. And importantly here, a, b, and c are just some real numbers. So there's some value, some number there. And we say that b or c, so b and or c, could be zero. So there might not be anything in those spots in the equation, but we do need an a value. a can't be zero because we need that x squared term. So it's really important that we have something for a so that we maintain that x squared, otherwise it wouldn't be a quadratic, but we can maybe have a b or a c. So those are more optional, but the a is required. And we have a special name for a, it's called the leading coefficient. Lastly, in general, the domain of a quadratic function is all real numbers, so negative infinity to positive infinity. We can give a quadratic function any input we want, anything is valid, and it will always provide us a corresponding output. Then our range is not so easily defined. So the range of our quadratic functions is going to depend on the leading coefficient a and the vertex value. So we'll see this as we explore some different quadratic functions, but just remember that the range is really going to depend on the situation, while the domain is always all real numbers. So I know this is pretty general, so let me show you some examples and we'll compare them to this standard form. All right, so I'm going to give us some quadratic functions here and we'll talk about how they relate to standard form. So all of these functions might not look like quadratic functions initially to you because they don't all have all of the terms. So they're not all written exactly as ax squared plus bx plus c, but that's okay. I'm gonna show you what's really happening, how they actually are written in that form. We just might not be presenting some of those terms. They might just be kind of invisible. That's okay. They're still quadratic functions. So for our first function, we just have x squared. But if we consider 1 to be in front of that x squared and then have a plus 0x and a plus 0, this is looking more like our ax squared plus bx plus c form. So here our leading coefficient a is equal to 1, and then we just have 0 for both b and c. So those values don't show up, but we're still a quadratic function because we could write it in this way. We just tend to write it shorthand as just x squared. Okay. Next we have g of x. Here this already has the a, b, and c. So we have x squared plus 3x minus 4. Our a value, our leading coefficient, is 1, then b is 3, and c is negative 4. So this one's a little easier to identify as a quadratic in standard form since it's already written in ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay, next we have negative 5x squared plus 1. Here, this is close, we're just missing the middle term, so I would write this as negative 5x squared plus 0x plus 1. So here the b value is just 0, but this is still a quadratic, and it's quadratic with a leading coefficient of negative 5. So I'm listing out all of these leading coefficients because we're going to make an observation based on these a values in a moment. Okay, next let's look at another example. This is 1 half x squared minus 4x. Here, this is in our standard form, we just have a c value of 0. So this is like having a plus 0 at the end. Our a value here is then 1 half. So a can be a positive number, it can be a negative number, it can be a fraction. It can be anything as long as it's a real value, a real number. Okay, then j of x is also already written in standard form in a way we can easily see. We just have negative 2 thirds as the a value, 1 as the b value, and negative 6 as the c value. So if we go to look at these graphs, I just want to make some comparisons between them. So starting with x squared, this is our parabola that has the vertex at 0, 0, and we say it opens upward. So it has this shape where it's sort of a cup that opens up. Then we've talked about this before, but this is going to have a range from 0 to infinity. Next, we have x squared plus 3x minus 4. When we look at this graph, this is still a parabola that opens up. 
but the vertex is now moved. So the vertex here is at negative 1.5, negative 6.25. And I just wanna comment that you can pretty clearly see that these numbers don't depend in a really obvious way on the formula. So we'll talk later about vertex form of a parabola and how the vertex is related to that form. But in this form on its own, you can't necessarily just pick out the vertex, at least not from the formula itself. So with this quadratic function, our range is then negative 6.25 to infinity. Again, including that negative 6.25 because it is one of the output values. Next, we have negative 5x squared plus 1. This is our first quadratic function or parabola that's facing downward. So that negative 5, the negative leading coefficient, is effectively doing a reflection over the horizontal axis, which is making this parabola open downward. So we'll make a generalization about this in a moment, but I just want to point out here that this is a parabola facing down. Also, it has a vertex at 0, 1. So this affects our range. Our range now goes from negative infinity up to 1. So the outputs are all of the values from negative infinity to 1, and we include 1. All right, now we have 1 half x squared minus 4x. This is another parabola that opens upward, and it has a positive leading coefficient. Its vertex is now at 4, negative 8. So we would say its range is from negative 8 to infinity, and we include that negative 8 since it is an output value. Then lastly, we have negative 2 thirds x squared plus x minus 6. So again, we have a parabola that opens downward, so that negative leading coefficient is what is unique here. It's giving us this shape that opens downward. And then our vertex is 0.75 and negative 5.625. So that negative 5.625 is part of our range. We'd say our range is from negative infinity to that value. So from negative infinity to negative 5.625. So this vertex value, specifically the y part of the vertex, is what helps us find the range. The domain is always all real numbers, so I'm just talking about the range here. So just to reiterate something I've been hinting at, all of the parabolas that open upward have a positive leading coefficient. Then if we look at the parabolas that open downward, these have a negative leading coefficient. So we're going to generalize this in a moment, but this is the main takeaway I want you to get from the graphs, is that the leading coefficient is affecting the facing up or facing down, but all of these graphs have the same parabola type shape. So the pattern I wanna draw here is that when A is a positive value, so when that leading coefficient is positive, the parabola opens up. But when A is a negative value, so we have a negative leading coefficient, the parabola opens down. So we're gonna make a general statement about this, but hopefully from these examples you can see how this is working. I like to think of the negative leading coefficient being like a reflection, a vertical reflection, and so that's why the function is opening downward. We don't need to get too much into the details, I'll just write a summary statement here. We say that if a quadratic function has a positive leading coefficient, a, then the parabola opens upward. So we have this parabola facing up. This is when the a value is positive. a is greater than zero. Then we can similarly state the corresponding statement for if it's negative. So if a quadratic function has a negative leading coefficient a, then the parabola opens downward. So it's facing down. Here the a value would be less than zero. Remember, we can't have a being zero, a is never equal to zero, because then this isn't a quadratic function anymore. We'd have a line if we didn't have an a value. So we really care about when a is positive or when a is negative. Then lastly, I just like to connect this to some previous concepts. If the parabola is facing upward, if it's opening upward, then the vertex is a local minimum. So you can see here we go from decreasing to increasing at that vertex. But if the parabola opens downward, the vertex is a local maximum. So we're changing from increasing to decreasing. So just a little connection we can make back to some previous concepts. All right, so that is an introduction into quadratic functions written in standard form and a little bit about how their graphs look as parabolas. That's it for this one. Thanks so much for watching and I will talk to you in the next one.